Hey guys, Steve Welch here with your fact of the day. So got a different fact for you. Fact of the day is I'm heading right now to go and take uh, what's known as the part 107 uh, drone exam. So um, <laughs> a little bit about what that is, just so you guys can know if you don't already, is that um, if you wanna fly a drone and have it in any way be connected to a business or connected to a way that, that you make money, um, you have to have this commercial license. Now, um, I, I, you know, there's a lot of people out there like, well, technically I don't make money from my drone. Technically in the FAA's eyes means you need the commercial license, <laughs> just, just so you know. So if it's technically you don't make money from it, or technically it's not my whole business. So like if you're a realtor and you um, and you take uh, videos of a house that you're selling, well, technically you're not employed to fly that drone. You're you're correct, but does not it help you with your business? So if it helps you with your business, something like that. If you're employed to you know do to like these roofers, there's a lot of roofers out there right now that will take a drone up and go look at your roof with a drone. They're also not employed to fly that drone, but they're using it as part of their business. You need to have a commercial license to fly that drone. So basically the easiest way to put it is that the uh, the FAA says, if there's a gray area, get your license. And, and if you're gonna try to have to excuse something away, get your license. <laughs> Um, now there is a recreational license you can get that's online. That's a little bit easier than the one I'm going to get right now. Um, but uh, there's a, a lot of uh, people that'll say I'm flying recreationally, and they're they're not. They plan on using that video to post it. They, you know, if somebody asks you to film something for them, even if you don't get paid, technically you're you're not doing it for fun. So it. You know, and, and that's, I guess that's probably the best way to put it. The FAA looks at intent of why you're flying. So if you intend to post that um, and you can possibly have any kind of money made from it or you're asked to do it, something like that, you need your 107. There's a lot of people out there talk about that, uh, but that's kind of the gist of it. So kind of give you an idea of what it is. It's basically a pilot's exam. So when you fly a drone, you're a pilot and it's uh it's important that you know the rules. So, um, you know, what are the rules? Well, there's a lot of them, all right? So, and, and the part 107 is 60 questions, right? You get two hours to take it. And I'm a private pilot, so I've actually already taken a, a test like that. So um, now I'm not current. So if I was current, I would actually get a little bit of a break on this and be able to, to do it a little bit different. But um, since I'm not current, I'm taking the same test that anybody else that would take for the uh, the 107. And then you have to remain current on it every two years too. So, um, but uh, kind of the easiest way to put it, you know, cause it, they can't test you over every rule or every law or they, they can't test you over everything like that. So the, the basic gist of the test, and this is, if you think about it this way, it can help you a lot. Uh, but the basic gist of the test is to find out if you can find out where the information is. And that, that's it. I mean, that, it's really that simple. So if you look at it this way about, you know, if you look on a sectional chart, which how many people that fly a drone are going to use a sectional chart? I have a stack of them at my house that are expired, right? Um, and a couple that are current, but I have a stack of them just because I don't throw them away. I like to go back and look, see if anything changes. Most times they don't, but every once in a while it does. But so if, if you look at that, that sectional chart, um, you can see on the back, you can see how to read it and that. Can you figure out what airspace you're in? That's the main thing a drone uh, operator needs to do, a drone pilot. You need to find out if you're in a restricted airspace, if you're in an MOA, a military operations area, if you're in, you know, class C, class B, um, if, you know, there's something that's a major obstacle that might be around you. So there's a lot of stuff, right? So. It's about finding that information and about finding uh, and, and being able to, to understand stuff, you know, going and, and finding out what a new rule is or something like that. Um, so that's, that's the, the, I mean, the, the kind of the, the, the crust of it when you're talking about why do they want you to take this test that's 60 questions 
when the laws are really they're they ever expanding and they're pretty you know they're, they're, there's a lot of laws when you're flying your drone and if you just go out and fly it you, you probably are breaking something you know and, and and they're evolving too so can you keep up with them do you know where to go to find out if something changes so that's basically the you know the gist of, of what the test is for and, and, and getting the license so um, so why am I taking mine it's for you guys actually and, and for me of course but for you guys so um, and and a couple other things too so you know, you guys know that I, I sell Toyotas I'm, I have my Toyota channel um, that's on there too you can always search Steve Welch and Toyota and you'll, you'll find me uh, pretty easily um, so I have that channel and, and I've had a few ideas about things that I want to do with that channel. Uh, the dealership I work for, Beeman Toyota, um, they're about to open one of the most state of the art, just just beautiful dealerships. Um, so we're, we're moving to that and it is something that I really want to showcase and something that I thought, man, being able to fly this drone would do that. So back to you know, why, why do you need a license? Well, if I was just doing that and I wanted to showcase it, there, there's your other gray area, right? Well, technically I'm not employed to fly it. I'm not doing it as part of my job. Um, could it drive business to me? I hope that it does. Um, but it's one of those kind of gray areas. Could I get away with it? Maybe, but here, here's the, the really interesting part about it. The new place that we're moving to is within Class C airspace. Uh, we're right within National International Airport. I mean, we're you know surfacing up. We're in National International Airspace. So, well, can you fly your drone in Class C? You actually can, um, but you need to have authorization to do so. They're not going to give a recreational pilot or, or somebody that just you know doesn't even go to to do that authorization to fly in class the airspace that's not gonna happen right so that's part of it too right so um and then i also you know back to the reason i wanted to get it i also want to do some drone footage for you guys and and do some things that will you know some i, I just i like things that are beautiful um and you can see some of the other stuff that i've done on this channel um i have done compilations where i've done some uh uh, put together some footage and set it to music and stuff like that um, and I've used other people's footage for a lot of that you know and and I've licensed that and I've bought that and it's just been something that um, that I did just because I thought it was it was really cool and you guys really responded to that so I, I'm gonna have two levels of this channel I'm gonna keep with the fact of the day and then I'm also going to do the um, the compilations that I've done where I put everything together like that and I just I really think you guys have liked that a lot so um, so that's what I want to do right so that's really one of the main reasons I wanted to get this drone license and in researching for you know stuff and you find out that people will turn people in for not having their 107 I I understand it, I guess, um, but uh, there's some people that are bitter out there. Um, but I definitely want to put this video out so that you guys know that uh, here in a, in a couple hours, um, I'll have the 107. So you know, if there's any question, you'll you'll know that I've got it. But um, so uh, the like I said, the test is 60 questions, costs 175 bucks for at least where I'm taking it. Not sure if they're cost more somewhere else but um that's that's where it is i'm heading to nashville international airport right now um taking it down there at the flight training school so um and, and definitely i've flown with those guys out there too at uh the tennessee flight training so if you guys are in this area and you guys wanted to uh, get your your private license or if you want to get your drone license or if you guys you know just just wanted to do something like that um definitely reach out to the guys at uh at tennessee flight training they're not not paying me or anything for, like that for this but uh i i know they've got uh, really good equipment and it's really fun uh to fly out of the international airport uh when you're uh, uh a, a private pilot because it's just kind of it's a whole different experience than some of these small airports um some people would be intimidated by it but if you're not it, it's it is really fun to do that so um 
but yeah, you fly out of the general aviation side. It's just, it's a really, it's a really fun thing to do, I think. And, and I really enjoyed it when I was uh, flight training over there. So, um, but definitely check out those guys at, uh, at and it used to be Nashville flight training, but it's Tennessee flight training now. So, um, but uh, definitely appreciate them. And it was really fun uh, training over there. So, um, but here's what I'm gonna do. So here in a second, you're gonna, I'm gonna turn off the video here, but here in a second, uh, I'll come back up. I'll let you know exactly what I got because apparently they give you your uh, your grade right out the uh, right out the door. Um, I will mention too on the uh, on the 107 that uh, you have to it, the you have to register online. Um, so you have to first get your airman's number with uh, with the FAA. I already had mine because I'm already a private pilot, uh, so I already had my airman's number. So that wasn't a uh, a hard thing for me to find. Um, but you have to get your airman's number and then you have to register for the test using that, that number. Once you register for the test using that number and then you take that test, you'll get a knowledge exam, uh, authorization number. I think it's like 17 digits, something like that. It's like a VIN number. Um, but it's a lot of digits and you'll go back into that system, um, for the, uh, for the FAA and you'll actually put that knowledge exam, uh, in there, the, the number in there, and they'll be able to see what you got, things like that and, uh, issue your, your part 107 license there. So, um, like I said, uh, going to take it now, you guys will see that uh, here in just a little bit and, uh, in a couple seconds for you, a couple hours for me. Um, but uh, not really worried about it, um, be quite honest with you, uh, just because it's uh, you know something that I've taken before. My my biggest uh, worry is that I get a little too cocky. I'm trying to stay stay out of my own head when it comes to that. Don't want to get too cocky taking the uh, taking the 107, you know, because uh, like I said, because <clears throat> uh, like I said, I have taken the uh, private pilot's exam before and. Obviously, I, I think I passed that with like a 97 for the private pilot's exam, um, which is a, uh, like I said, it's a little different than the uh, 107, but if you can get a private pilot's license, you should be able to get a drone license. Oh, I will mention something else too while I'm thinking about it. Um, the When you get your private pilot's license, there's like several steps, right? You need to, to go with an instructor. You need to go with an examiner. Um, and do a flight test and you have to prove that you know how to fly it you have to prove you have the knowledge airspaces you know talking on the radio stuff you have to prove that you can do all of that stuff before they'll they'll issue a license that you can navigate that you can do you know all these all these parts of being a private pilot when you get the 107 you don't even need to prove that you can fly a drone I think they figure that by the time you're taking that test, you've probably been flying them for a while, um, or at least you have some extensive knowledge of aviation, hopefully, uh, or, you know, maybe not extensive, but enough. Um, so you don't need to uh, prove to them that you know how to fly your drone. Um, so that's kind of interesting too, but uh, I mean, I, I guess you don't want a bunch of drones flying around, which is usually a major airport when you're taking the test. So <laughs> that would make sense, right? So anyway, we're going to take that 107 here in just, just a few minutes and uh, I will uh, hop back on here afterwards and tell you guys how we did and uh, um, give you some information. If there's something that, that surprised me, I might tell you about that, but um, I quite honestly, I might be one of the more prepared people just because, you know, a, a lot of the people that are on YouTube and, and that talk about, uh, getting their 107s, they're going, well, I just went in and I did studying on YouTube and I've never done anything with flying. Well, the fact that I've been a licensed pilot since 2010, um, and we're in 2023 here, I, I think I should have a little bit of a leg up on that, but doesn't mean I'll get the best score, but, uh, like I said, if I get if I get cocky and I overthink it and I go, yep, know that answer, and I just blow through it, I mean, there there could be a few of those. I'm gonna try not to, but uh, they always say the RTFQ, right? Read the question, right? So and then read the answer. So read the question a couple times, read the answer a couple times, and, and watch for those little nuance things, um, the the little always and nevers and the. Um, the, uh, the things that are obviously wrong, 
try to eliminate an answer. Um, those are the types of things that I do whenever I am, uh, uh, whenever I'm trying to, uh, sorry about that, but uh, those are the types of things that I do whenever I'm taking a test. Eliminate the wrong answer first, it leaves you with, because it's multiple choice, but eliminate the wrong answer, leaves you with two possibles for the right, and then find the most right answer. Um, and usually if you can do that, you'll, you'll do all right taking a test, but um, just, hey, we'll see how we do. I'll get back on here in just a little bit, and we'll, uh, we'll go over it, but uh, see you here in a second. Hey guys, all right, so it's been about 45 minutes since I last recorded for you guys, and uh, yeah, it was uh, pretty easy, to be quite honest, uh, I thought it was. Uh, got a 92% on it, so uh, missed uh, just a couple of questions there, but uh, uh, probably some of those that, uh, that I thought I probably got a little cocky over or something like that, but uh, uh, yeah, it's uh, pretty awesome. Uh, so I am now part 107, uh, a uh, certified uh, licensed drone pilot. So uh, uh, very, very awesome. So i um, very happy to, uh, to have that. So um, definitely reach out to me in the comments. You guys got any questions on getting it? It was not that difficult. Walked into the facility. Um, I got there early. They told me wait until time. <laughs> <laughs> okay um so i got there early um waited in my truck for a little bit and then uh, was able to get in there uh they obviously go over all of the uh the do's the don'ts you have to empty your pockets uh put it in a little lock box stuff like that um and they give you a piece of paper they give you a regular calculator and they give you a pencil and i honestly used the piece of paper to basically measure uh 12 or sorry 13 miles that they were asking what was 13 miles south of a particular airport um and they said what's or what's the height of a tower that was 13 miles south of this airport so i went down and i used the um the the legend that was on the bottom and it and it gave miles and it went uh 5 10 15 20 so i marked about where you know about where 13 miles should be based off of looking at that chart and when i did that i just laid it over and went south of it and went boom there it is so it, it that's the only thing i even wrote down so everything else i just kind of went off memory for and it was uh was pretty sweet by the way if you guys want to look you know got the airport that's right here you can see uh southwest planes that are there there's a delta plane there um just kind of kind of cool another plane just took off it's uh right ahead of me there so um pretty cool there's another southwest that's coming over the bridge uh, pretty cool on these uh the, the nashville international airport i am literally right here at uh at bna um and uh, it's just, like I said, I'm just leaving. This is where I took the test. Uh, General Aviation side of Nashville International Airport. Uh, this, if you never had a chance to come to Nashville and you guys come up here, beautiful city, uh, beautiful airport. I mean, they just keep building and building and building more stuff. Um, you see, you're really close to all the airplanes if you're just driving right here. Um, that's obviously Southwest. Southwest is massive here uh, for, for Nashville, so. Um, a little off the subject, but figured I'd show you because, you know, I was here, right? Um, <laughs> but uh, definitely happy to have the, the 107. Like I said, reach out to me if you guys got questions about it. Um, like I said, it wasn't all that hard. Um, familiarize yourself with the terminal area forecast and how to read those, um, how to read the dates that things are. Like there was one question that um, it was like, you know, when will this terminal area forecast uh, go into effect? And if you actually looked at it, it had several forecasts that were in one of the, the area forecasts for what time each thing's going to happen. But if you don't know how to read it, you don't know the answer to that. So always, you know, try, try to familiarize yourself with those. Heard a couple other people that said that the um, issue they had was a lot of uh, on the charts and finding things on the charts. Um, and, and like I said, I've had people say, well, why do I need that as a drone pilot? I mean, why do I need to know a chart? You need to know what airspace you're in. 
Um, there, there is nothing like uh, having that issue. Um, and then obviously knowing the, the heights that you can fly and things like that, also very important uh, to know how far below clouds, which is 500 feet, that you can be below clouds because they asked a couple questions like that. Cloud covers at 800 feet, how high can you fly? Well, it's no longer 400 feet. Uh, because you're you got to be 500 feet below the clouds you can only fly at three so um, stuff like that was uh, <clears throat> a lot that was out there um, now uh, I will mention that I saw in the comments on a drone that I was looking at which is one of the Holy Stone drones uh, which I have a 7 uh, 720e Holy Stone HS 720e which I'm going to be producing a lot of videos with so uh, watch for that but um but I had somebody that was in a comment on one of those when I was reading it, when I was uh, looking to get it. And uh, <laughs> they, uh, they had asked, said, I know that you can't go over 400 feet legally, but how high can you actually fly? And they asked that question. And I saw probably one of the best responses I think that I have ever seen to, uh, to a comment. And the response was high enough for thousands of dollars in fines. That, that was a great, great uh, response. So now, now realize in an emergency, you can deviate from things, stuff like that, but uh, you, you definitely wanna follow the law. And here's the thing. So um, part of the reason that I wanted the 107 is number one said, uh, you know, I'm basically saying I'm gonna follow the law. You don't get this license without um, basically a testing that you're gonna follow the law, right? So, it, and, and that's pretty much what it is. It just almost guarantees that you're gonna comply, right, with, with the law. And that law is not out there to, you know, basically harm you. That, that, it's not out there to restrict you so that you can't do what you wanna do and, and, you know, I should be able to whatever. And you know what, that law's not out there for that. The law is out there so that it keeps everybody safe. Um, most people don't even think about this. Air traffic control is not about forcing somebody to do something. They're, they're not about that. Air traffic control is about aircraft separation. Um, and, and that's very important. So if you're in a, in a drone and you're flying very close to an aircraft, that's not safe, you know, or, or something along those lines. I mean, you're, the, the whole reason that air, air traffic control needed to be there is because you got so many planes in the air that you needed to keep them away from each other. So there's a lot of laws and stuff about how far that aircraft have to stay from other ones where they can take off. Uh, air spaces are different because you need to know who's in control of what airspace. So who has the direction, the direction of that, uh, that airspace. So who can, um, tell you what to do when you're in a particular spot and then they have flight restrictions things like that there's uh, there was one question that I had on the 107 that said when can you fly in this area and you looked at it it, it had a, a TFA which is a temporary flight uh, restriction and it said from two or from surface to 2,000 feet for demolition and then it was temporary flight restriction, and it was like there was no way around that so you wouldn't even get an authorization to go through there ever right um, just because it's you know the reason that there was this flight restriction right um, and usually you'll have things like the president coming in or whatever and they'll they'll say look you can't fly here because of a VIP or you can't fly here because they're um, you know there there's something going on the space shuttle when the space shuttle took off they would have a temporary flight restriction. I mean, God forbid you go, or, or I'm sure anything with SpaceX, they probably have the, the flight restriction whenever they go to take off. I mean, don't fly your drone next to the spaceship when it's gonna take off. That's why they do that. Um, so like I said, the, the part 107 is a lot about just knowing that you know how to find the law, you know how to read things like charts, you know what flight restrictions are. And then here's the other thing I'm gonna tell you, get the app that it's called it's before you fly right the before you fly app that will take your exact location before you fly right and it will tell you you're in controlled airspace it will tell you there is a flight restriction it will tell you that it will and it doesn't eliminate you know you from still having to you know check flight restrictions or, or check that um but it does it, it does help of course now it's not going to tell you hey the wind's too much for your drone it, it won't tell you that 
but it will tell you that uh, you know you, you need authorization. You're in a controlled airspace. You're in, you know, or you're good to fly. It'll it'll say good to fly. Um, but like I said, that doesn't mean that you can, you know, if the winds are 30 knots and like my drone, I think you can go about 26 knots, I believe is what it says, or, or 26 miles an hour. It's, it's very close, right? Uh, I'm not sure if it lists in knots or miles per hour. I'd have to look at that again, but um, I know the number is 26. Um, but uh, so if, you know, it says that the winds are 30, then, you know, realistically is there a chance that i can't control the drone in a 30 mile per hour wind gust or even if it's if it's sustained at 16 gusts to 30 as soon as that gust i will lose control of that drone so you need to know how to find the weather you need to know how to read the weather um and and not just looking at you know these weather apps and stuff because a lot of people are like well i'll just look at a weather app and it'll tell me it won't tell you all of the stuff that, that you need to know it won't tell you that you know certain things now here's something that's really cool most airports that have an AWOS system, so an automated weather observation system or an ASOS uh, system, will give you a phone number. So if you go to like AirNav, so airnav.com, A-I-R-N-A-V.com, you can actually a lot of times find the phone number for the AWOS system. So, and it will talk almost the same way that the, um, that it's listed on the terminal air, uh, the, the forecast, it will basically line you out. So if you wanna read that, you can always uh, listen to the AWOS and look at the current terminal area forecast, right? And it'll read it out to you. But if you can get that phone number uh, for whatever airport you're nearest to, I, I guarantee you if the, if the airport says, you know, you're, you're calm winds and you're two miles from the airport, it's probably not that much different you know, around, or what are your cloud, what's your ceiling? You know, you, you're supposed to be 400 feet below the clouds. Well, how do you know how high the clouds are? Do you just kind of look up? You, you might not be able to judge the height of the clouds from where you're at. It, they might be at 400 feet and you're going, all right, well, they look like they're at 800 and you go and fly and technically you're breaking the law, right? And keep in mind the FA, like I said before, doesn't work in technically, right? So they will, you know, not maybe not necessarily find you, maybe not necessarily come after you. They may make a phone call. They may contact you in some way and say, hey, we've noticed that you flew and this was the, the particular case. Or you took off and you got into the clouds. I've seen a couple of drone videos where people flew through fog and they're like, oh, I just wanted to see how high it was. That That's not legal, guys, <laughs> just so you know. So realize that the part 107 doesn't give you a license to be stupid right people can be stupid all themselves i know that but it doesn't give you a license to be stupid basically you're saying that i have the ability to find out what i need to know there you go right so but that's it like i said 92 percent passed um very happy to have it and uh i'll do the rest of it online and you uh uh, get a temporary and then the FAA will send you your permanent. So, uh, but that's how that goes. Very, very easy. Everybody was great at the testing facility. Um, once again, thank, thank them over there at National Flight Training, which is right, right at National International Airport. Um, but uh, they, they definitely uh, did a good job there. Um, but I appreciate them. Appreciate you guys. Definitely like, subscribe, and we are going to have some more fun with drones coming up. And I'm going to show you a bunch of stuff that, uh, that I want to. <laughs> so like, subscribe, Appreciate you guys. Have a great one. We'll talk to you soon. Bye.